April 14th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Joshua chapter 24 from the Old Testament. Joshua assembled all the Israelite leaders at Shechem. He summoned Israel's elders, rulers, judges, and leaders, and they appeared before God. Joshua told all the people, Here is what the Lord God of Israel says. In the distant past, your ancestors lived beyond the Euphrates River, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor. They worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from beyond the Euphrates and brought him into the entire land of Canaan. I made his descendants numerous. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau I assigned Mount Seir while Jacob and his sons went down to Egypt. I sent Moses and Aaron, and I struck Egypt down when I intervened in their land. Then I brought you out. When I brought your fathers out of Egypt, you arrived at the sea. The Egyptians chased your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. Your fathers cried out for help to the Lord. He made the area between you and the Egyptians dark and then drowned them in the sea. You witnessed with your very own eyes what I did in Egypt. You lived in the wilderness for a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought with you, but I handed them over to you. You conquered their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, launched an attack against Israel. He summoned Balaam, son of Beor, to call down judgment on you. I refused to respond to Balaam. He kept prophesying good things about you, and I rescued you from his power. You crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The leaders of Jericho, as well as the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites fought with you, but I handed them over to you. I sent Terah ahead of you to drive out before you two Amorite kings. I gave you the victory. It was not by your swords or bows. I gave you a land in which you had not worked hard. You took up residence in cities you did not build, and you are eating the produce of vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Now obey the Lord and worship him with integrity and loyalty. Put aside the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates and in Egypt and worship the Lord. If you have no desire to worship the Lord, choose today whom you will worship, whether it be the gods whom your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But I and my family will worship the Lord. The people responded, Far be it from us to abandon the Lord so we can worship other gods. For the Lord our God took us and our fathers out of slavery in the land of Egypt and performed these awesome miracles before our very eyes. He continually protected us as we traveled and when we passed through nations. The Lord drove out from before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land. So we too will worship the Lord, for he is our God. Joshua warned the people, You will not keep worshiping the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God who will not forgive your rebellion or your sins. If you abandon the Lord and worship foreign gods, he will turn against you. He will bring disaster on you and destroy you, though he once treated you well. The people said to Joshua, No, we really will worship the Lord. Joshua said to the people, do you agree to be witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to worship the Lord? They replied, We are witnesses. Joshua said, Now put aside the foreign gods that are among you and submit to the Lord God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, We will worship the Lord our God and obey him. That day, Joshua drew up an agreement for the people and he established rules and regulations for them in Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the law scroll of God. He then took a large stone and set it up there under the oak tree near the Lord's shrine. Joshua said to all the people, 
Look, this stone will be a witness against you, for it has heard everything the Lord said to us. It will be a witness against you if you deny your God. When Joshua dismissed the people, they went to their allotted portions of land. After all this, Joshua, son of Nun, the Lord's servant, died at the age of 110. They buried him in his allotted territory in Timnaz Sirah, in the hill country at Ephraim, north of Mount Gosh. Israel worshipped the Lord throughout Joshua's lifetime and as long as the elderly men who outlived him remained alive. These men had experienced firsthand everything the Lord had done for Israel. The bones of Joseph, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem in the part of the field that Jacob bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for 100 pieces of money. So it became the inheritance of the tribe of Joseph. Eliezer, son of Aaron, died, and they buried him in Gibeah, in the hill country of Ephraim, where his son Phinehas had been assigned land. God, it sure seems like we as Christians don't have very good rhythm. <laughs> it seems like people, a person rises up or people rise up or a group goes to a conference or somebody reads a book or they listen to certain music and, and we get on fire. And just like a, a fire in a fireplace, you have that one like piece of paper that lights really, really big and tall and shiny and bright and hot, but it doesn't catch anything else on fire. And so the whole fire goes out, including the original spark. Is, is there going to be a time in our generation where we have a true revival? I've read about them in history, but even those eventually died out and we're, we're back to worshiping of the world rather than worshiping you. And reading this about Israel, I know that right now they're inspired by Joshua. Yes, we will put no other gods before our God, the Lord. It doesn't take them very long to change their minds about that before their fire burns out. God, I guess today I'm just praying for... For people to be on fire for you, for them to make it their responsibility. That that's why we're put here on earth. To be excited about you, to tell others about you, to live our lives for you. I, I am certainly not telling you how to run the world, but sometimes I honestly wish you hadn't made this world so beautiful. So distracting. We're distracted by significant others. We're distracted by children. We're distracted by going camping with friends. We're distracted by things of the world. And I, I totally realize that some of those things of the world haven't come up from your heart. I completely get that. But God, can't we just stay on fire for you? Why is this so hard for us? I think for some people it's hard because they don't have other fire starters around them to help catch on fire. So for them, God, I pray that they find a church to go to, that they find uh, a way to invest in a small group, uh, that they get involved in a Bible study with other people. Groups of people together catching fire at the same time have a lot bigger ability than just one person kind of in the middle of nowhere. Now, I'm not forgetting for a second, God, that you're in control and anything can happen. But we are still just humans here. Thankfully, uh, you have the ability to change things like that. So, God, I just pray for them to find other fire starters. God, for people who are already in church or, or already in groups, that they will help ignite the other people in their group and help them stay on fire. 
you know, you keep showing me over and over again. I keep wanting to help people who aren't saved. <laughs> I keep getting excited to tell people who aren't saved about you. And you do give me those opportunities. Um, but more and more you keep showing me uh, to help others uphold their faith, to, to uphold that spark, to uphold that fire that they have. Um, to kind of be the, the water girl <laughs> on your team. Uh, to help them with their walk. It's been kind of interesting. I, I don't know where that's leading, but it's been kind of interesting watching that happen. God, I just pray that if it's your will, that we see a revival. Our world is messed up. The things that even make it to the front page of the newspaper are horrid enough without realizing there's tons of things that don't even make it to the front page of the newspaper. Horrid situations. Babies aborted alive with other human beings taking scissors and snipping their spinal cords so that they die. Teenage girls holding other teenagers hostage, abusing them and putting them into prostitution. Drug dealers, where it's all about the money, not about the people whose lives they're destroying. God, there's just so much pain in this world. So many things that are messed up. Not just here in the United States, but all over the entire world. I just want you and your love and your grace and your mercy to rain down on us, God. And I know the only way that that happens is if we are obedient. If all these little tiny fires all over the world suddenly come together and there's this amazing revival where Christians aren't made fun of, they're not denounced, they're not abused, they're not killed. I get that you said that we would be persecuted. I do understand that. Not to the full extent other Christians have of you either denounce your faith or you die. But I do understand that that's part of being a Christian. But God, at what point will the rest of the world understand who you are? I am scared for some of the people and what they're saying about you. I watch their comments online, not only towards Christians, but more importantly towards you and your word and your church. And I get really scared for them. I know that I don't have an answer to this. I know that you have the power to do this. I do from the bottom of my heart plead with you. Just as Moses pleaded with you. Instead of your wrath, allow your people, allow your remnant to come together and show other people your love. Show other people your grace. Show other people your mercy. Show other people your forgiveness. I know what I'm asking for it seems like impossible things, but I know with you, all, not some, all things are possible, which is where my pleading comes from. God, a revival, a revival that starts from all of these people that read your word and live it out day in. And day out, a revival from their hearts, a fire that starts with them. Thank you, God, for being so faithful to a nation of people that is not. I know that you are always, always faithful to who you are. You cannot not be you. So I know that you will not be faithful to a nation that is not faithful to you much longer. I just pray for change. 
I just pray for people, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.